Okay, so today we're going to talk about minerals. Um, and I just have a disclaimer that I'm not an expert, I'm not a medical doctor, but I do hope that what you learned today will inspire you guys to go and do more research for yourself and figure out what is right for your body and situation. So does everyone understand that? Yes. Okay, good. Because this is not medical advice. <laughs> okay, so um, two-time Nobel Prize winner, Dr. Linus Pauling, says, you can trace every sickness, every disease, and every ailment to a mineral deficiency. So our story is we, um, the first time I had heard about minerals for animals was on the Elliott Homestead's blog. Are you guys familiar with Shay? Yeah. Okay. So back in 2014, well, so before we did this publicly, we were doing it on our own without showing it to anybody. And so I frequented like Jill Winger's blog and um, Shay Elliott's blog and read it. And so that was the first time I was introduced to like a free choice mineral system for animals. And it was really interesting to me. We did have cows at the time, but we were not feeding them that. We just had like salt and kelp and maybe one other like mineral mix that we just did pretty much the bare minimum. So that was like, goals for me. I was like, this is what I want to do one day for our cows. We're going to do it. Um, then on the Great American Farm Tour, we were at Greg Judy's house and then also Full Circle Farm in Florida. And they had the free choice mineral bar. And it was just like, okay, these are goals. Like we're going to do this one day. And then when we got back from the Great American Farm Tour, we had a cow named Violet. And do you guys remember Violet? Okay. So she had like a rough coat, she was losing condition despite our other cows not losing condition. We couldn't really figure out what it was. It seemed like it was fescue toxicity. So she was like not coming back into heat. So she had had her calf and then three weeks, which is when she should cycle back. The bull was like not interested and we were like, what is going on here? So we kind of just started noticing some things. She would like um, have a really high body temperature. She would pant, all these things. And it, it seemed like it was fescue toxicity. So we actually called our vet and we were like, what do we do? And she's like, well, you know, it could be pneumonia or it could be fescue toxicity. And we're like, well, how do we find that out? Like, is there a test that we can do? She's like, well, you can put your cow on antibiotics for seven days. And then if the, the symptoms don't abate, then we'll say, oh, it's fescue toxicity. And I was kind of like, I don't really want to give my cow, you know, antibiotics for seven days just because we think it might be pneumonia. Long story short, we ended up calling her. And she did not have pneumonia, so she did have fescue toxicity. And for people, do you guys know what fescue toxicity is? So basically, fescue um, is there's tall fescue. There's all sorts of fescues. But the tall fescue, and this is just my understanding, um, it has like an endophyte in it that creates the blood. Um, it, it causes the blood in the cow to become thick. And so like it, it doesn't flow well. So you can use the minerals to um, heal that, which we had actually tried that earlier before we were told to do antibiotics. And she just, she wasn't interested in the minerals. So we were kind of like not sure what to do. Um, so we ended up calling her. She did not have... Um, pneumonia though. So we were right on with our um, uh, assessment of what was going on with her. But so to have a healthy, to have a, so when we purchased her, she, she had these issues when we got her. Honestly, we should have put her back onto the trailer when they unloaded her and we got a good look at her. We should have said, you know what? this is not the cow for us. But you know, like they've driven like 10 hours with the cow, we've paid for it. You kind of just are like, we'll make it work. And it doesn't always work like that. So learn from our mistakes. If you see the cow and you're like, eh, put it back on the trailer. <laughs> it's gonna be okay, you'll figure it out, you'll work it out. Because we pay a lot of money for a project cow, basically is what that came down to. But so going back to minerals, so healthy animals need healthy crops. And to have healthy crops, you have to have healthy soils. And as I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard, that our soils are depleted of minerals. 
And why is that? Well, they're depleted because of chemical fertilizers have come in and have, I don't quite understand why that has happened. I'm not a scientist, but I do trust what I was reading. So the chemical fertilizers, I guess, are throwing out of balance what is in the soils. And so that is one of the reasons. But then the other reasons are is that Justin has lived in our community for 40 plus years. And um, recently, actually, interestingly enough, there was a, there's a dairy farmer who lived over the mountain and he would contract with all the local landowners and they would um, plant corn in these fields. And I asked them, so this year, this was the first year they did not plant corn, they planted tomatoes. And I said to Justin, I said, have you ever seen these fields, because I've been there 20 plus years, I've never seen anything but corn in these fields. I said, have you ever seen anything but corn in these fields? And he's like, no. And so that's 40 plus years of corn being planted every year and heart, you know, the whole nine yards of it. And we have never seen them ever even chemical fertilize it. So, I mean, you can imagine that, that field, those fields are pretty well depleted because corn is a heavy feeder, you have to add back in after you do corn. And I know, and so, I mean, so across America, as we drove across America in 2017, I mean, the amount of corn and soy that has grown, I mean, I, you guys live elsewhere, you know? And so you've seen it yourselves. There's just so much, and they're not necessarily, I mean, maybe they're putting chemical fertilizers on it, maybe they're not, I don't know. In our community, they weren't, because, um, the reason we know this is because Justin lived next to the fields. Like, his house is up here, the field is over here, so they would know. But um, if it's just being continually used and nothing put back into it, there's not going to be a whole lot to give. You know, so what's the corn that's being grown on that is not going to have the nutrients. So actually in 1936, this was really interesting to me. In 1936, the U.S. Senate actually warned of the depleted soil. So this has been going on a real long time. I mean, 1936, the Senate, I guess, you know, a little different back then politically, um, is being like, hey, guys, like, we need to figure something out. Something's going on here. This is not working. Um, and nobody has, nobody's really done anything that, at least governmental or politically, and not, I don't even know if I even want that, but, <laughs> you know, like, they're saying, like, way, way back, almost 100 years ago, hey, this is a problem, and it, nothing has been done, as far as, to my knowledge. Um, so, one thing that I really was always interested is that when we were visiting these farms that had the freestyle mineral bars, they had, they just would fill up the container and allow the cows to choose um, what they needed, and cows... Cows or animals, I shouldn't just say cows because there's other animals that eat minerals, but they actually know what they need. Their tongues are like, one thing that I was reading was saying it's like a little laboratory. And they know, like they, I, I mean, I've, I've witnessed it now that we have this. They come up and they lift up the flap and they, they sniff it and they, you know, put their tongue in a little bit, kind of like, see, okay, what's this? What's this? And then they'll go for something that they really need. And it's just so interesting that, Animals have not lost that instinct <laughs> of, of knowing what their bodies need, and they are um, correcting. So here's the cycle. So there's the, hold on one second. I got to take a minute. <laughs> okay, so they can recognize, and they'll seek out the healthy nutrition. So if you've ever watched an animal graze, they're, they're picking and choosing. They're not eating everything in the field, you know, they're, they're saying, like, I want this, and then they'll walk over there, and I want that, and then they'll just say, I want this, you know, and it's just, it's, they know what they need. And so the free choice minerals that we have chosen, so we chose ourselves to use um, Advanced Biological Concepts Mineral Program. There's several of them, though. So there's Advanced Biological Concepts, there's Free Choice Enterprises, and then there's, which actually Free Choice Enterprises is the first one to go and do this, to um, start the, the free choice mineral, which I guess that's why they have the best name. Um, Pat Colby 
also, though, is another one. She's actually an Australian author, and she has several books. So she has Sheep, Goat, and Cattle, and actually Horse Care, natural books. And in that, she outlines a, um, a mineral program for them that's actually, it's a lot less than, like, advanced biological, it's a lot, I'll admit. Like, but I'm a lot. I, I overdo things. I will admit that firsthand. Justin will say that I, I know how to find the most expensive thing on the internet. I'm like, I don't try, I just know what I want. And if it might be the most expensive, it might not. But um, so Pat Colby, she outlines in her book, and the part of the problem with Pat Colby's that I found is that, so she's Australian, and so some of the things don't necessarily translate like from Aus Aus Australia to our stuff, like how, what you can purchase. So if you have to do like a lot more digging and when we were trying to rehab Violet, um, I just didn't have the, the time or the, the patience to dig through. And I was like kind of scared because these, some of them, I mean like so they're minerals, but they're also chemicals. So like there's like lots of warnings on all this stuff. And so I was like, I don't want to kill our cow. <laughs> Giving her something that I shouldn't, but um, there are, there's more, the internet's bigger now and there's more, um, blogs and stuff out there that outline and if actually you're abundance plus member if you go on our, our old facebook group you can go into the files and sh there's um or just search it somebody did like outline all the minerals on the facebook group for pat colby's thing and like gave links which is huge because that's that's the hard part is like knowing what you can trust and this person had um has used pat colby's um, mineral program and has seen results so at her farm well I'm jumping ahead of myself so I'll say that later um, so we actually chose the 15 stone kit is what it's called and it has selenium in it the 15 one does so that's another thing on you need to find out and there's like a map online that you can go to like a selenium deficient map basically and it shows where selenium is deficient in the US it's a lot um, of course, we live in a selenium deficient area, so that's something that we do want to have out for our animals. So we did that, but I'll just read off the minerals that come in the kit. Um, that, that's what we chose for our animals. So we actually chose the sheep and goat kit, but our cows eat that too, so they're all ruminant animals. They can, it can kind of like, they have a dairy cow. It's a, it's a lot. When you go to the website, it's very overwhelming. So that's why... Um, I actually went with the sheep because I wanted our sheep to eat it also, which they do. And the cows, it crosses over. And when we eventually get Lily a horse, I'm going to have to Weird. dive into that whole horse realm. Because they also have like a whole horse kit too, which, whew, it's a lot. Okay, so we, got, we do iodine and then um, a vitamin mixture. It's called Amix. So how um, Advanced Biological Concepts does, they do like, um, it's like iMix, which is iodine. A mix, which is um, vitamins A, D, and E. Um, BBC, which is a B, B vitamin complex. Buffer Plus, which helps with digestion. It has enzymes and other things that help boost, um, like if they have low acid in their rumen, that will help boost it. Uh, C mix, which is calcium, copper, potassium, magnesium, phosphorus, sulfur. They have a trace mineral kit that actually does have selenium in it as well. Um, zinc, selen, and then we do have selenium, and then there's um, a GR, it's called GRP, and I don't know what it stands for, but it has to do with glyphosate, and so glyphosate, when they eat a grains or, um, I guess, pasture that has had glyphosate on it, it will, the glyphosate will then bind up minerals in them, so I don't know if you guys know, and you might not, and that's why you're here, <laughs> there's a circle, there's a mineral wheel, is what it is, and all the minerals are on the outside, of it, and I should have brought a picture of this so we, you guys could see it, but it has all these, these lines connecting all the minerals, and so you can see which mineral either, so this mineral needs that mineral to function properly, right? So they need to have enough mineral of this for their bodies to absorb this much mineral. Sometimes they go to each other, sometimes they're antagonists. Like, if you have too much calcium, then it, that bothers the phosphorus. So like you have to like have everything in a perfect balance. It's it's a 
it's a huge mess when you're out of out of whack with your minerals. But so that's something. It's it's it can be really overwhelming actually getting into it. So um, the glyphosate then it it going back to what I was saying, the glyphosate will bind up certain minerals and then that antagonizes other minerals, so then it can cause other problems. So that's why um, I like to have the GRP because even though we do purchase organic grains for our animals, and actually our cows and sheep don't eat any grains, they just eat alfalfa pellets, but I mean, as you know, there is GMO alfalfa out there as well. So, you know, even though it's organic, things travel and uh, such a big mess, what glyphosate has done to our world. But um, even though we're trying to mitigate the glyphosate, it still is happening. I mean, our animals eat GRP on the regular. I am filling up that one almost every time I refill our mineral kit, which we try to do once a week. Sometimes I would like to do it at least twice a week. Um, it doesn't even happen once a week. So GRP, it's, uh, so our, our animals are getting exposed to glyphosate, whether it's through our water, because we all know it's in the water, and all these other things. Um, and then the last one that we have is, um, it's called mop, and it's actually a mixture of different clays, which interestingly enough, we had a sheep that had eaten what we think is um, horse nettle. Is that what it's called, Justin? So we have, um, we had we've gotten horse nettle on the property. It wasn't there 10 years ago, but it is there now. We think that we got some hay that must have had some of those seeds in it or compost, something. So it is here on our farm now. We had some sheep eat, I guess, too much of it. And she started having neurological issues, like her eyes were like, doo -doo -doo, and she couldn't walk. It was really wild. Come to find out, though, we had a, um, she, had, she had pooped. And we were, of course, like looking at all the poops, like trying to figure out like what's what's where are some clues that we can get. And um, she had eaten the mop to help mop up the toxins that were being released in her system to create the neurological issues. We did end up treating her with like extra vitamins and um, things of that nature to help her overcome that. But um, I thought it was really neat. I was like, yes, it's working. Like she is like going to what her body needs and we're having it available for them so that they can kind of self-medicate, if you will. Um, so th it's kind of weird because like, I don't, you know, obviously it's not a medicine, but it is a medicine, like, you know. So um, we also have out salt. So we've been using Redmond salt, um, but I think this, did we get that sh in the shipment, the C90? Agro C90. I want to try different salt just to see if it, at least, you know, different minerals, different things happening. So I think they're actually, I think they actually have a booth here. So it's um, CSEA90. Um, and we just, they carry it at our, where we order our grains from. So, you know, look into that. Then kelp, we have that always out for them. Um, and I like Thorvin kelp. It seems like it's the best. We've used some of the other cheaper kelps, but they just don't smell as like rich and as nourishing as the Thorvin. So I just I recommend that if you can't afford the Thorvin, it's only like ten dollars more per bag. But you know, money is real. It's it is a struggle for some. So like you know, I would get any kelp that you could. Um, and then I also like to have charcoal out. I like to let them kind of choose if they need to take charcoal um, and then also DE, diatomaceous di earth. We always keep that out in times when, um, like if something's going through the herd, mainly our sheep, I've never, I've only given it to our cows for mastitis, but vitamin C. Uh, sometimes I have extra, thank you, I have extra bins. So I will... Um, I'll put vitamin C in there if I feel like they need it. And it's very interesting because we did, we, we had something going on with the sheep when they first came. And I think it might have been due, due to stress with the shipping. It was a long trip. They came like 16 hours, I think. So I ended up just putting free choice vitamin C out. It was crazy. They would like just lick it up all the way. And um, I just kept putting more and more. And finally, they just got their fill. And whatever it was passed, we didn't have anyone die from that, thankfully. Um, so that's it. So the cows and sheep, they're not actually prevent. So you know how, like, we are, like, we'll, we'll take things to prevent. Like, we'll take elderberry syrup or, 
If we feel like, you know, we might be compromised or we've been around someone who's sick, we might take an extra dose of vitamin C, something that, so animals don't do that. Like, they don't understand, like, they're just, like, right here in the now. They don't, like, understand the future. So they're literally just preventing, or they're not preventing, they are literally correcting the deficiencies that have come before them. So say their nutrition, alfalfa pellets, or if you're feeding grain, or the hay that they have is not nutritionally superior. I mean, hay is just dried grass. So you're going to lose some nutrition in your hay. Um, like Greg Judy, he doesn't actually feed any minerals in the winter because he says they gorge themselves on it. But, well, is he feeding hay? He's not. Well, we feed hay, but I still do minerals because I'm like, I want my, <laughs> I want my animals to be top notch. Because if we're eating them and we're drinking their milk, I want to have the most superior nutrition for my family. Um, and if that means we're going to spend a little bit extra money on minerals for our animals, then that's what we're going to do. So they're just basically, I mean, you know, you get your animals from somewhere. You don't know what their nutrition is before they got, got there. And you just need to, I mean, that's like the whole purpose of it is just to correct the nutritional deficiencies that they've had previously. So as we, so we rotationally graze, we move our cows and sheep every day. And as we move through our whole entire farm, it's so interesting to see what they are picking. So on this, on this pasture, they're picking K, which is potassium. Over here, they're picking sulfur. Down there, they're picking um, it's been, it's been really interesting because in the beginning, I'm going to go back to my, um, my list. So in the beginning, they were like real big on like BBC and A, and, but now they're getting into copper and zinc and, it's, and the trace minerals. It's really interesting to see how we've like moved along because so I bulk order. So you can bulk order with this, this company and you can get a pallet sent to you, which does save on some shipping. And actually, we just started, um, our neighbor actually does the same, not our neighbor, she lives three miles down the road, but technically she's our neighbor. She does the same mineral program as we do, and so we started going in with each other, and so we actually save more on shipping because we can get 40 bags on a pallet, and that lasts us um, almost a whole year. So then we can just order together. So I, if you do do this, I highly recommend trying to find somebody in your area. But um, it's been really interesting to see how we're, like, now buying other minerals. And I, and I think that just goes back to the mineral wheel where, like, they were low in this, which is antagonizing another mineral, which was then also, you know, causing issues with other things. And so now they're just, like, correcting their deficiencies. Going back to the lady who had the Pat Colby um, mineral solution, mineral mix, she was telling me, so she had been doing it for six years on her farm. And she said, I'm finally seeing the light where it's slowing down. So it had taken six years of rotationally grazing on her farm, her animals having access to these minerals for this long, and for like the minerals deficiencies that the animals had or that her farm had were finally starting to correct themselves. So it's like, it's not a quick fix. It's definitely not a quick fix. It's a, um, a pretty long-term game of how long have we been doing it it was like 2018 I guess is when we started so we've been and I feel like I mean sometimes I go out there and I'm like shocked at what how many how much minerals actually still in the mineral sled so, you know it's 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 interesting it's just it's it it's it's mind-blowing to me maybe not to you guys um just to see how how it has progressed in the way it has. Um, okay, so, um, all right. So this is what, the, my last thing on the animals is the minerals are important, but you cannot, so I don't, you can't out, you can't out mineralize a bad diet or bad water that you're feeding your animals or unclean water or bad living conditions. So like while minerals are important, you also do have to, be doing other things to help your animals be healthy. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Okay, so now we're going to move on to humans, which is my more favorite topic. Um, so when we started doing this back in 2018 with the animals, I started thinking, well, golly, if 
we're doing it with the animals, why wouldn't we be doing it with ourselves? Like, this makes so much sense. Like, because if you are giving minerals for your animals to be healthy, well, why wouldn't we give in minerals to our humans to make us healthy? So that's when I was like, it started blowing my mind. I was like, man. So I started um, researching more into that. And um, I found that, well, and I'm sure this probably does cross over to animals as well, but we are born with um, a mineral fingerprint. So whatever mineral status that your mother had when she was pregnant with you is also given to you. So if your mother is deficient, then you could be deficient when you're born. So the design is obviously for the babies to take minerals from their mothers to have a near perfect mineral complex, if you will. So that's, that's the goal in pregnancy. But with mothers, we're not always mineral replenished, <laughs> if you will. So Morley Robbins, who is, um, he, has, he has a whole thing. He's someone that you could look up if you're interested more in this. Um, he says that we're five generations deep in mineral de deficiency. Um, the United, I guess the United States. I don't know if he's talking about other places, but I mean, he's based here, so I'm assuming here. So basically, um, we're five generations deep on not having enough minerals. So that kind of was really interesting to me that, you know, just how, how it's just passed down and passed down and how we're the sickest, you know, we're the sickest that we've ever been. And we have all these issues and kids have like all these chronic illnesses. Like it just seems so crazy that, um, you know, it's 2023 and we know so much yet people are so ill and like what is it now that our um, is it us or our children I, I can't remember are gonna live less than our parents you know so I mean that's like such a sad statistic we should be living longer we should be knowing more we should be doing better and yet we're not um, so why so there's soil health is depleted from the chemical fertilizers like I was talking about before and the overuse of land Processed foods, so our, our diets have changed, and we eat more processed foods than ever. But this, this blew my mind, y'all. So Rutgers University in 1999 did a study on produce, and they found that grocery store produce contained 15% of minerals that vine-ripened produce would contain. So 15%. So the 85%. Uh, it's 85% deficient grocery store. I was like, what? I mean, like, I knew that, like, grocery store produce was, you know, obviously not superior um, to growing it fresh in your backyard. But also, like, I live in today, and I know that, like, I can't, where, where we live, we can't grow cucumbers all year round, and I like me some cucumbers. So, like, you know what I mean? So, like, and sometimes I want to eat a strawberry in February, which I know, I know it's wrong, but sometimes I want it, you know, and sometimes you just got a hankering and sometimes you're pregnant and you have a, a craving for something when it's not in season, you know, and so obviously we, I would just kind of like, you know, be like, okay, you know, like this isn't as good as if we had grown it at home, but like, I didn't realize it was that bad. Like it, it, it was, it just really blew my mind. And then also the trace minerals for, so the trace minerals that we need for vitamin production were completely absent. So like, why am I eating a vegetable from the grocery store if it's so lacking of, of what I actually need? And basically, um, they were saying like organic produce was no better in the grocery store because it's, it's picked how many months before you actually buy it, you know, and then it's ripened on the, on the, the truck as it comes. And, um, that's why, I mean, so with organic produce, you're not getting the pesticides and all of that, which I don't even know about that anymore, um, with the peel and all the things that are now coming to us that are supposedly these great progresses that are not, but I digress. Um, so I just was kind of like, wow, you know, like, so I, I love tomatoes. Like, I love tomatoes. I love homegrown tomatoes. Love them. But even in the winter, like, I will buy grocery store tomatoes to make some salsa. I want some fresh salsa with much, some chips, you know? Like, but now I'm like, after, like, 
this, I just was kind of like, this is so disheartening, you know, 85% less, like, so basically I'm not eating it for any health. I'm eating it because I just like the taste at that point. You know, you're not getting what you need. So that blew my mind. So this is the other reason why we are deficient, five generations deficient in minerals. In 1876, the refrigerator was invented and we stopped using salt to preserve, preserve our foods. And that was another like mind blowing thing for me where I was just like, what? Like these old ways that we're all now getting back to because we're, well, there's lots of reasons why, but that we're coming back to our, what kept us healthy so long ago, you know? And so I think that that was just, was really interesting. Like, you know, we think about refrigeration like, it's such a great invention, and it is. Like, it's so wonderful. Like, y'all, we all love us some refrigerators. <laughs> I mean, I got a lot of them. <laughs> so I, I will be the first to say, like, I love me some refrigeration. But at the same time, like, I didn't, I guess I just didn't realize the impact that I had on society in general that um, we are now, now this is the cause of why we're so ill, you know? Um, this is another crazy thing. So we're having, we have mineral disruptors in our food. So bromine or bromine, I don't know if I'm saying it wrong, is um, in flowers, store-bought flowers. I don't think King Arthur, I think they're the only one that doesn't have bromine in it. So that actually will disrupt our mineral absorption and, and, and antagonize minerals that we already have. So like what in the world? Like we can't even just like buy a bag of flour in the store. Which, by the way, don't get me started on this, but flour in the store is horrible for you. <laughs> uh, that's a whole nother rabbit hole that we can go down later. But basically, grinding fresh grains is the best way to get flour. Um, I used to, when, before I was gluten-free, um, and hopefully, you know, in the future, I want to try einkorn, and I'm going to buy my einkorn berries. I'm going to grind them myself and make sourdough we'll see how that all goes I've got to get some things dealt with um, with my thyroid before I can do that but don't buy flour in the store get you get you a grain mill and buy you some bulk berries from um, some store that's near you that carries them and do that because it's, it's going to be so much better for you you're not going to have all these additives and things of that. And then it's actually going to have nutrition. So I don't know if you know, but when you grind grains, so when you grind wheat berries for, for gluten flour, you, um, within three days, most of the nutrition is lost in that. So the flour that you are buying in the store to make a nutritious sourdough, which sourdough in and of itself, in and of itself is nutritious for other reasons, but you're not getting all the nutrients that you could be getting. So that's just... Okay. And then also in the early 20th century, they started purifying salt to prevent clumping and to make it look white. I'm like, what? It's, so, it's so silly to me because I'm like, really? That was like a whole like problem? You know, like, I don't know. Like, I just, it, it's so interesting to me what people will be sold on. Like, I remember, like, uh, so our, our handyman, Rand, Randolph, do you guys know him? Okay, so he's having, like, knee issues. He went to the doctor. He's going to have to have a knee replacement. And I was like, well, I'll have you, like, um, well, I gave him some other suggestions, which he couldn't do. But then I was like, you know, he's like, well, I have to, I have to lose weight. That They won't give me a knee replacement until I lose some weight. And I was like, well, um, have you ever just thought about, like, eating, like, meat and vegetables and fruit and, like, raw cheese and, like, you know, just kind of doing that? And he's like, No. I was like, really? I was like, maybe you should try it. So he did it, and he's lost 19 pounds, y'all. Like, it's crazy. And he's just like, he's like, my knee's feeling good. Like, he's just feeling, he's like losing all this inflammation. Anyways, I don't know why I was saying that. Oh, well, he said to me, he's like, well, maybe I shouldn't drink Mountain Dew. And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was like, you know what? If you probably just cut out the Mountain Dew, you would probably lose a bunch of weight anyways. And then what was the other thing? Oh, Little Debbie's. I was like, bless you. <laughs> but I loved it because he, so this was like in the morning, one morning. I just, you know, and I'm not like, I don't want to shame him in any form or fashion. Like he is doing the best that he can. And he just, he doesn't, he's, he's never been told, you know. Yeah. 
So I'm just trying to help him and educate him. And so um, it was so funny. So he, he was working over at the house. He had come over here to ask me a question. And so we, st we started talking about his knee, you know. And then he went back over. And then he had to come back over to, to like, fix something on my washing machine for me. He, I could just tell he wasn't thinking about it. And he goes, what about white potatoes? <laughs> could I eat white potatoes still? And I said, you know what? If you give up your Mountain Dew and your Little Debbies and gluten and grains, I was like, eat all the white potatoes you want. You know, like, come on, like, just work with them. And so he's, I guess, I don't even know if he's, I don't know if he's eating the white potatoes, but he's like, I couldn't just eat meat. And I was like, no, no, I didn't want that. I wanted you to eat other things too. You know, even throw in some dairy. Like, don't, don't get too crazy. Because when you give up gluten, you got to keep the dairy, you know. This is, this is how I've been able to manage <laughs> being gluten-free. Because I couldn't imagine, like, I have friends that are gluten-free and dairy-free. And I'm just like, bless you. Like, I can't live without cheese if I can't have bread, you know. It's just rough. Okay, so I digress. Okay, so those are the whys. So we're going to go back to the mineral fingerprint. So a 150-pound person has about 28% or should have about 28% of minerals in them, which comes out to be about 42 pounds of minerals, which is crazy. I know. I see that face. She's like, whoa. Okay. So one pregnancy, one pregnancy takes 10% of the mother's minerals or four pounds. Like, that's crazy, y'all. Like, four pounds. Of minerals go to the baby like the baby takes that from you like that's just like this like blew my mind I'm just like what so the mother is depleted right going into pregnancy and then the baby is going to take every it's going to take everything so it's going to leave the mother at zero with some stuff because it's the again the design of pregnancy is for the baby to be born with a near perfect mineral status. So the baby's gonna take everything from you and it's gonna leave you with nothing. So like for me, I have had five pregnancies. Now I had four, well I had three that were pretty back to back and then I had three years in between Gideon and Lily. But Gideon, man, he has, he has the most issues. Of all my kids. And I'm not saying like behavioral issues. I'm talking about like teeth. Like, y'all, all my other kids don't have cavities. He does. Like, what's the deal? He had a febrile seizure. None of my other children had any issues with fevers. They would get they would run a fever, it would go to a temp, it would stay there, and then they would get better. Like, you know what I mean? We never had this. Gideon, 104. Every time, every time, doesn't matter. All the other kids have 101, 102 degree temperature. His is 104. One time, Justin took his temperature and he goes, 105, that can't be right. And I was like, oh, I mean, for him it is. Like, I literally started getting panicky every time we would get a fever because it scared me. I mean, 104.9, 105, like when you see that on your, your thermometer, after you take your child's temperature, it will strike fear in your heart as a mother. You're just like, what's, like, is this safe? What's going to happen? I mean, like, we are, I, it was, I had major fear of um, fevers in our home. So, um, we started doing minerals, and Gideon got, you know, so, I gave everyone according to their weight. You know, I, I would measure out different minerals for each kid. They would get different uh, measurements of them. So we started doing this. I started doing magnesium. I started doing vitamins, vitamin B, which was, uh, we were doing at the time, I was doing bee pollen. So I would give everybody a different scoop of bee pollen. And then, um, and I would just put some warm water in it and let it kind of like uh, mush, if you will and just stir it, and it kind of just becomes like a liquid, basically. It doesn't taste bad. Personally, beekeepers, it, it, I actually like it. You can put it in smoothies. You can put it on, on yogurt. Like, there's lots of ways to eat bee pollen. I would not eat it at night, though, because it is a B vitamin, so it will give you energy. <laughs> so you want to take it in the morning. One time I took it at night because I didn't know, and then I was like, oh, dear, what did I just do? Like, because then I started, then I, like, I, like, took it, and then I, like, read the back, and I was like, don't take it at night, and I was like, oh, 
I'm going to be up all night. Um, so I did um, minerals, B vitamins, and magnesium, and cod liver oil. So we did cod liver oil in that. So I, you just have their little shot glasses and have to take it. And um, the next time we had a fever, he didn't spike a fever. Like he would, like one time, I don't know what this was, but he spiked a 104 degree fever, was in bed for like four days. You know, so I called the pediatrician and they're like, well, you know, if it goes on longer, let us know. So he like got better, but not like all the way better. He like didn't have a fever, but he was still like sleeping. He was like taking naps. He was like six, I think. I was kind of like, that's not him. <laughs> He's very energetic. So, and then, um, and then like three days later, spiked another 104 degree fever. I'm just like, what in the world? So I was like, I'm bringing him in. I'm taking him into the pediatrician. Of course, by the time we got in, <laughs> he was completely healed and back to complete full energy. So she was kind of like, you know, I don't know. And it, nobody else in the house is sick. Like, what in the world? Like, you know, you know mothers who have multiple children. <laughs> when one kid goes down, you're like, oh, dear, it's going to be two weeks at least, you know, where everybody goes down and we're all, and, and even the parents are going to go down maybe at some point. We just had a fever last week, go through the house. Justin and I didn't get it. I was like, hallelujah. <laughs> Because, you know, and I was like, it had to be a little kid thing because it was all, all the kids. I mean, the, you know, and it was like super, it was like a super mild fever. I just had a headache. It was like perfect, actually. It was a great, it was a great sickness. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've got to be sick, you know, it's going to be great. Okay, so um, I think that's, I think that I don't have any evidence that the mineral status helped Gideon. I can't, I can't say that for sure. But what I can say is that this is how he was before. We did this regimen probably for only six weeks, you know. And that was the result that I found. And that was, it was a direct result. I mean, I can't say for sure. Like, I have no testing. I, you know, I haven't done a study or anything. So I'm not saying that, you know, minerals are going to be heal, heal all. But I am saying that I think that's something that we should definitely be looking at. And I think that that is a huge missing piece that we have in our medical system is that we're not looking at that I mean like for me I have been replenishing my minerals um, you know I did so that after Gideon we were done we weren't going to have any more kids and so I had been you know steadily replenishing my minerals and and being um, proactive about it I'm probably still deficient you know like it's been a, it's going to take a while yes I'm going to go over that okay so uh, what can you do? I have 10 minutes. Okay, what can you do? So I highly recommend getting a hair tissue mineral analysis. It's about $100. You can order them online. You cut it to your hair. There'll be directions, but you cut it close to your scalp, and you want the, the I don't know how, how long it is, from the this, this scalp, like the end that you cut off your scalp. They don't want, like, your long hair. Do you know what I mean? So you kind of just, like, cut it way back in here where nobody can see. It's going to grow out, you know, and um, that will give you your mineral analysis. So there's lots of practitioners online that you can work with, um, like telehealth type thing. I had a hair and tissue a mineral analysis with a local doctor in our town. So there are people who do this. Like, it's a thing. And I do think it's great to know. I have a friend. She did it with her daughter because her daughter had, like, eczema and, like, all these crazy health things. Fifth child, you know. And she had, so she has a 13-year-old, and then she has, like, seven, six, five, three, you know, like, so, you know, you know that even if she's replenishing, she's not replenishing at the rate that she needs to, to have babies so close together. And so they've been doing, they've been working on it, and, like, her eczema is almost completely gone. Um, she's talking. She was, she was a late talker. And, um, like, it's... it's uh, it's because, though, they were doing a certain protocol to help. Because, again, you have to remember the mineral wheel. You know, like, if you have not enough of this, that's going to cause this problem. And, you know, it's all very connected. So you want to supplement certain, um, certain minerals to boost them. And then you retest, and then you boost the other minerals that need it. It's, it's, a, it's a process, you know. So that's, I would say... Definitely need a HTMA if you have some sort of chronic illness, 100%. If you are just like had a bunch of babies, you want to replenish, I would just 
start taking minerals to replenish your body unless you like have something like seriously wrong then you know so I would highly recommend so this is what I would do if I'm telling y'all which I don't want to tell you what to do but this is what you can do um, so drink filtered water because you want to be getting the contaminants out that are going to cause issues with your miner current mineral status so drinking filtered water is, is very important um, ionic minerals they're normally um, like liquid based is is what I found that lots of people and there's lots on the market um, I will give you some brands in a minute um, whole food vitamins so I am a huge believer in whole food vitamins because we vitamins are same to minerals they can antagonize each other so if you do too much of one vitamin it's, it could cause issues with other but nature knows what it's doing and it, and it gives you the vitamin to, you know, the A to, so for instance, like a, a vitamin A to D ratio, it, it knows what it's doing with that. So I just highly recommend whole food vitamins. Um, eat whole foods, vine ripened. This is like huge. Like next year, Justin and I are really going to try, well, our goal is to not go to the grocery store next year. So we're going to get real serious. Because this is part of the reason I want to is because of this, because I want to eat the best nutrition, you know, that we can. And so no more strawberries in February that weren't vine ripened, you know. Um, so that's it. But so if you can ripen on the vine, I mean, we're all here. We're all obviously interested in growing our own food. And so Heartway Farms, they have a lot of info on canning. Um, you can look them up. There's freeze drying, there's dehydrating, there's all these other freezing, there's ways to preserve the harvest when it is, um, and this is one thing too, you know how like you get a jar, and I'm gonna go really fast, the jar of like tomatoes or a can of tomato sauce, the thing about that is even if it's in a jar, okay, and even if it's organic, right, the pot that they're cooking it in is probably aluminum. So you're getting aluminum. I mean, like every time I open a, a, I mean, like I know this and I still use tomato sauce. You're pouring aluminum tomato sauce into your pot, even if it's organic and vine ripened. And it's, you know, they have the claims it's like seven hours from vine to the jar or whatever it is, you know, I don't know. And so I'm just like, I'm saying that like that, um, like when I'm at home, like I'm using stainless steel. I know exactly what's touching it. I don't know what's going into the jarred tomatoes. Now, if that's what you have to buy, buy it, because you need to eat. <laughs> but I'm just saying that is um, just something to think about is preserving your own food. Um, so, okay, so more whole foods. Liver, you can take beef liver in capsules. That's what I do. I can't, I'm not eating the liver. It's so gross. Um, <laughs> I've tried. I've chewed it. There's videos on our YouTube channel of me eating liver where I, like, gag. Bad. It's, if you want to see me gag, just find the liver video. Okay. Cod liver oil, we um, take that. Raw milk, raw cheese, eggs, butter, tallow, lard. These are all things that are just like really good. Whole foods that you can grow on a farm or you can get from a farmer. Somebody who has done it and it's not, you know, we're just, I'm, I'm like, y'all, I'm just so done with whole foods. I'm so boycotting. I'm just boycotting. I'm just done. Like if I have to go there, I will, but like, I'm just like ready to buy from farmers. I'm ready to buy from small things. And, and yeah, I'm just done with Whole Foods. Yeah. <laughs> Breach. <laughs> okay, so mineral supplements. I'm going to give you um, brand names. So Biofulvic, um, Fulvic and Humic Multimineral, is that's what I was giving Gideon when we um, did that. Now, so that's also a detoxifier, so it also helped detox. So maybe he had something in there that was you know, antagonizing his minerals, but it's also a, it is also a mineral supplement. So I don't know how to say this one, but it's what I've been taking. Iodon, it's E-I-D-O-N, ionic minerals. And let me tell you, so they're liquid and they don't taste bad. So if anyone's ever taken um, concentrates minerals, y'all know. The little, the blue bottle, it's like this tall and it's, it's minerals. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's good for you, but whoo! Y'all, it's rough. I told somebody, I was like, you should, so she was wanting to get pregnant. I was like, you should really be doing minerals. I was like, but it tastes, my kids taste, it um, tastes like Yoda water. So you know in Star Wars where Yoda's trying to die and Luke keeps talking to him and won't let him just die. And it's, the, it's in the swamp. That's what my kids say it tastes like. If that water, if somebody tasted that water, that's what the, I know. 
They call it Yoda water. And when the people come to visit, they're like, you want some Yoda water? And I'm like, stop giving our guests Yoda water. Like, because they'll be like, this is terrible. Why are you feeding this to me? Yes. Many babysitters have gotten Yoda water. And then they're like, what in the world? <laughs> My kids really enjoy giving that to people. OK, so that's the Concha Trace Minerals. Um, Highly recommend just like doing your half teaspoon or teaspoon, whatever it is, little water, just a little water. You don't want to do it like undiluted. So my, my idea is like shot glass and then just guzzle water after that. Like nothing makes it taste good. I've tried everything. I've tried like apple juice, pineapple juice, nothing, nothing. It's, off. it's just horrible, y'all. Um, we do Shilajit from Mito Life. Um, it's S H I L A G J I T, and it's Mito Life is the brand that we use of the Shilajit. It comes in little tablets, so like normally it's in like a liquid resin. It's terrible. It's another like, whoo. But if you take it in the little tablets, they say you can put it in coffee. I don't drink coffee, so I don't know. But I just swallow the tablets. It's easy. It's it's, it's and you get a little bit of the like. It's kind of tastes like um, like. I don't want to say rubber, but it's just like, a, it's a very earthy. Let's just say that. It's very earthy. Um, Keton, hypertonic, and isotonic minerals. These, you don't have to take all of these. Like, choose. Like, look it up. Like, this, I'm not saying, uh, these are all ones that I have taken. Um, the, the hypertonic is super salty. That's actually like a purified seawater. And so I kind of like, I actually like, um, Taking different minerals from different sources because you're just getting different things. I think I think it's a good idea. Um, Justin likes the Utah Sea Minerals from um, Trace Minerals. He takes that, and then he also takes the RNA Reset um, Mag Magnesium and then Remite Remite Minerals. So that's kind of like his like electrolyte, which has minerals in it as well. Like it's it's a mineral complex, I guess you would call it. I don't know. Okay, so you can't overdo it, so don't take all those at once. Um, go really low and slow, like just take a little bit at a time. Um, the, the keton, a hypertonic and isotonic, what I, what I do with that is you can actually buy like a, a liter of it. And then what I do is I just take, it's mine, nobody else uses it, so I just swig it, and then I just guzzle water. It's not that bad, it's like, it's like tame seawater. So it's salty. I mean, you're not going to get away from it. It's salt. Like, you've got to get, like, there's taste with it. But the, I, the E-I-D-O-N, Idon, Edon, I don't know how to say it. They have um, their mineral, multi-mineral. It's, it has a little bit of a taste to it, but it's nothing like the really bad stuff. Okay. Um, and then salt. There's, um, there's so much. Like, I've deep dived into salt lately, and it's just so overwhelming. But from what I have found, the best salts out there are Jacobson's, sea salt, Crucial 4 has two different types of salts that you can get. And then Redmond's, we still use it, but there was a concern about lead, so you guys just deal with that. Figure out what, what's right for you and your family, and if it's, if it's a concern or not. I don't know. I kind of go back and forth on it. Um, like I said, we still use it. I mean, that's what we have on this trip is Redmond's, so it's, it can't be that bad. Um, okay, does anyone have any questions? Yes. 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 Yes, I feed it free choice. It's just on its own, in its own little thing. So what I did is I went to Tractor Supply, and I bought, like, the, I think they're mineral, it's okay. I bought, like, mineral feed. I think they're called mineral feeders, and we just kind of made our own mineral feeder um, for the cows. And so then I took a Dremel, and I... I went into the plastic and I put in each mineral, like what it is, so that I know, you know, you have to label really well when you're doing it for the animals because it'll drive you crazy if you don't. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> um, so I have some questions, but I'm about to ask. Okay. Because I'm an integrated health Okay. Like okay, perfect. <laughs> what I noticed, and I don't know if this is something you would notice as well, but like the, 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 the correlation between selenium deficiency and we have major like postpartum depression, it, it, there seems to be, from what I have read and what I have researched, there seems to be a strong positive correlation. Like selenium serotonin, malforma serotonin malformation is 
what generally tends to lead to postpartum issues, like when you're talking about mood. Right. So she was asking, I should repeat, I forgot I'm supposed to repeat the question. Um, <laughs> selenium deficiency in correlation with postpartum depression or uh, issues? Depression just and anxiety. And, and anxiety. Uh, you know, it's in, very interesting because I have, because I have thyroid, you know, issues. I have been, you know, off and on doing selenium, you know, like we, with my doctor, we like try, like, let's try this selenium um, Thing. It's very interesting because, I mean, I, I don't doubt it. With my second, I had postpartum anxiety. And nobody, I, nobody even talked about the anxiety part of it. It was all because I was like, well, I'm not depressed. But I was so anxious. And he was my child who had eczema. So, I mean, and I, he was, you know, so him and Jonah are 23 months apart. I did not do any mineral you know, I was taking a multi, you know, the, the junky prenatal. I mean, it's probably a good prenatal, but it's junk now that I look back on it. Right. Um, you know, I think that I, I had gone, like, with that as far as just um, nobody talked about anxiety. Right. So he's going to be 14 in November. So 14 years ago, like, I was like, what is going on with me? Like, I didn't even, I didn't even have a name for it. Um, but I would not doubt it. I mean, I think that it's so... I'm just so shocked at how much information there is on minerals out there and how nobody is talking about, especially for pregnant women, that they should be taking minerals. Like, it, it just blows my mind. But I don't doubt that it's selenium would be a correlation. Well, Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they usually, uh, I mean, anytime I say anxiety, usually I go to mag, like usually it's mm-hmm. magnesium. But then also with that, so B6 is, co- is a cofactor for magnesium. Right. So like we have these complexes. I don't know. I'm just, I, I know, and I understand. I wish that there was like, a, I. So many, like, I know that, like, no, nobody, she's like, there's, she's speaking Greek now, but I. <laughs> It's so it's just crazy to me how much we know about this and how much it's not being talked about. And and I just want I just want you guys to be inspired to go and research it and say, okay, what's right for my family? What this is what's going on with my kid, or I want to get pregnant, I want to have more kids, like what should I be doing to help them? Or like I've had like kids back to back to back and I need you know, this kid has this this health issue, this kid has this health issue. You know, I mean, it's just crazy the what what we're dealing with now, and too, then just the toxicity of you know, of our world now, which is also antagonizing minerals. <laughs> okay. Yes. Is the mineral feeder plans on Abundance Plus? I don't know. She wants to know if the mineral feeder plans are on Abundance Plus. Justin, are the mineral feeder plans on Abundance Plus? I don't know. Okay. I'll ask later. And what, he doesn't know. What wheat berries do you get? I always get hung up hard, soft. Right? So I was just, I was just, I, I don't know how I stumbled across this, but they were talking about the hard. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know because I'm out of, so I used to buy hard and soft, but I'm gluten free now, so I don't, I don't know anything about it. I would do, if I was still eating gluten, I would eat on corn. Personally, I saw a test. I, uh, I will get to you. I promise. I saw a test where they took three different flours, and it was just like regular all-purpose flour, and then like some Italian flour, and then einkorn, and they mixed it all the same, all the same weights, right? And then they took it and they put it underneath a, a running water, and the all-purpose flour turned to like glue. The Italian one, like, half disintegrated, but then half glue. And then the einkorn, like, completely disintegrated. Like, completely. I was like, I should eat einkorn. How do you spell that? E-I-N-K-O-R-N, right? Okay. And, um, but there's a book, and I, I hear that it's very different than regular flour. I don't, I don't have any experience, but this is, I hope to have experience. Um, I hear there's, it's very different, and it's, it's a different animal. It's like an ancient grain. So, yes. So, what are you doing for your garden? 
Right, so what we're doing this year, we just started, so we have our animals on deep bedding, and so we're taking that and we're composting it. And then we're putting that on the thing, and then we're also getting something called AgriGrow. Um, we are, he's coming to our house next week, the guy who reps it, and um, he is going to hopefully give us some, it, it, like actually it, it's supposed to help the microbes that are already in the soil. Um, and then also we are going to probably pour raw milk, skim milk. I've been doing some research about that. It's very interesting to take. Because so we almost, we're thinking about getting rid of our pigs because Justin's not like into pork anymore. He's not, he's not, he's just reacting to it. So we're like, should we get rid of our pigs? We don't know. But then what we do with all our skin milk? I'm like, we'll pour it on our pastures. So I don't know. Um, I, that's, that's so far what we're going to do. I might do a soil test too. But I feel like the agrigo is going to help it so much. OK, somebody had a question. Yes. Right. Oh. And then the rabbit buyers were constantly to give them carrots. Yeah, I don't know. So for the rabbits, I feel like rabbits just want to die. Um, <laughs> so he's asking about, like, is there something that you can give the animals to help them when the people who buy their animals are feeding them toxic plants and things, and things that they shouldn't be eating, like milkweed or carrots for rabbits? I don't know anything about rabbits because our rabbits all died. Um, and it wasn't my project. So <laughs> um, I would say that MOP, the MOP, from Advanced Biological Concepts, it mops up the toxins. That's like the whole like play on words, like mop. <laughs> you know, so it's supposed to like mop up the toxins. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the GRP. I would look at Advanced Biological Concepts and see what they have for that. But that's frustrating you're selling animals and I'm sure the people are probably like what's wrong with my animal it's all your fault I know I know okay any more questions